Here at Carnegie Mellon, the Moon Arts Group is seeking to embody the Earth to the Moon and embody the Moon to the Earth. Nothing could better fit our mission at the intersection of art, science, technology, and culture than imagining what it would be like to bring art to the Moon and extend the realm of human creativity beyond the borders of our planet uh, into the, the lunar domain. A number of CMU faculty, students, and alumni and collaborators uh, have put together a series of about a dozen different proposals for projects that are going to go to the moon. Uh, NASA is going to be announcing very soon, this fall, uh, a new initiative in participatory exploration. So many of these projects that we're proposing are participatory art projects that involve the public. Uh, performances that are conducted uh, on the moon um, by the robot, whether it's in the form of mark making on the lunar soil. One of the biggest images that we take away from the Apollo missions is the footprint. And in the history of man, the desire to make marks and tell a story through their marks is something so fundamental that it seems inevitable that some of our earliest things that we would do on the moon would be to make marks. Some of the projects that we're talking about um, will take advantage of the fact that there is this object on the moon that is dedicated to talking back to Earth. And we have projects named Moon Bell and Lunar Lyre, um, where music and sound and the, the audio and visual spectrum becomes part of the sound art, bouncing back and forth between the moon um, and the Earth. Information from the lander itself then is, is played in, in this context. Uh, we have sent the lander, it is part of us, um, and it, it, its motion through the orbital regions is represented in the sonic experience. And also, they consist of a combination of cargo, small sculptural objects that are going to be brought to the moon that are very charged in what they mean and what, what they represent of us. The DNA is going to be placed along with carbon and water samples from Earth's largest physical extremes as well as the mouths of the world's largest 18 rivers and seas. So essentially, we're not only sending DNA, DNA is sending the environment itself. The, the Earth tapestry that I intend to place on the moon will have that kind of feature. It will show the things that are important to us and it's also going to show things uh, in the future for the future uh, viewing it that have disappeared through artworks from the smallest micro nano scale to the galactic scale from instantaneous moments to hundreds of millions of years in other words our time frames are extraordinarily long because of the nature of the moon and the fact that things can last there for hundreds of millions, if not billions of years. So right there, we're stretched out in terms of the time construct that we're facing. And then our scale extends from, you know, way down in the nanoscales up to very large galactic framework scale. I have to imagine that together we'll create some pretty spectacular uh, media art experience out of the whole thing. Three.